I'm Doug Jeromack. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Pennsylvania and also an affiliated researcher at the National Center for Earth Surface Science. So we're in the Penn Sediment Dynamics Laboratory right now and this is a tank that we use to build a physical simulation of a river plume. And so if you imagine that this little plastic channel right here is the Mississippi River bird's foot, the Southwest Pass Channel. And we have the river coming out and discharging into a big ocean here. And what we're really interested in is how that plume from the Mississippi River mixes with the surrounding water. And so we're just going to inject a little bit of dye, which will color the river plume so that you can see how it mixes with the surrounding water. All right, so now you can see the plume starting to come out right here. And watch what happens as the plume exits the channel. You can start to see it mixes with the water and starts to take on its own characteristic pattern. It's swirling and it starts to bend off to one side. And if you look at those sea surface temperature images from the Mississippi River Delta, you can see the same kind of pattern that in some way this plume is a coherent kind of meandering jet, but it doesn't necessarily go straight. Sometimes it starts to twist and turn and meander from side to side. This is, uh, this is Federico Falcini and I'm a postdoc and a research assistant here in the Department of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Pennsylvania. And I've been working with Professor Doug Jerolmack in uh, uh, river patterns uh, and deltas uh, and in particular in a, in, a nice, uh, in a nice problem about how to relate the Bloom, the outflow of bloom uh, of a particular river like the Mississippi River to the, to the sediment pattern that uh, will occur uh, related to that particular bloom. We, we have been looking about satellite images to figure out which is the particular shape of the Mississippi River plume and when we started to see in the news that probably the plume of the Mississippi River can be one of the solutions to keep detached the oil from the shoreline. So what we see here is that in the end of May to early June we started to see a real push of the river moving the oil offshore and what that means is that the flow rate coming out of the Mississippi River was relatively high while the elevation of the ocean southward of the bird's foot was low and that combination actually allowed the water to kind of mound up as it came out of the Mississippi and that mounding up actually pushed the oil offshore and you can see that the plume at this time became detached from the shoreline. But now we're in this stage in the hydrograph which means that the flow rate coming out of the river is going down. And as the flow rate of the river is going down and down as we enter summer, the oil slick is coming right back onshore again. Well. There is a particular pattern in which you can actually see a super elevation of the surrounding water of the Mississippi Delta pushing away the water, but not from not because inertial or outflow reason, but rather than for gravitational reason. So the water is piling up, moving away the oil in this way. We want to include the river dynamics in this situation. Of course. We would all like more time to consider this, to do some models, to do some calculations, and do some experiments, but reality demands that we make these kinds of decisions right now. Natural barrier islands that were present on the Mississippi are now currently eroding because the supply of sediment coming upstream from the river itself has been cut off because of dams. And also the levees that have been built on the side of the river prevent natural sediments from being dispersed into the wetlands and depositing during floods. So. If we build these kinds of barrier islands, we're going to have to keep nourishing them with sediment. And that could be expensive. The other problem is that hurricane season is upon us. And one hurricane could come and wipe out three months worth of construction. 